welcome to Tales of Honor Podcast, a podcast dedicated to telling the true stories of every recipient of the Medal of Honor. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Tales of Honor Podcast, and it's the last one of 2019. I'm your host, Christoph Ambrosch, and today's episode is going to be episode number 267, and it will be wrapping up the uh, two-month segment of World War II recipients. If this is your first time hearing this podcast, please be sure to subscribe wherever it is you're listening. This way you get new episodes every time they come out every Wednesday and Sunday. And moving forward, I will be putting the vote up uh, either later today or tomorrow for um, what the next two months will be covering. So be sure to check out my Instagram stories. I believe they do also go to uh, Facebook stories as well. So you should be able to vote there in addition to Instagram. So be sure to let me know what you want to hear over the next two months. And now, a tale of honor. On the 7th of October, 1908, Cecil was born in Crawfordville, Florida. Like other stories, I was unable to find a lot of information regarding his life, other than he was married twice, first in 1935 to Babette de Franche, who died in 1939, and then to Bessie McNabb in 1939, and from what I could find, they had no children. After graduating from high school, Cecil worked in the hotel and restaurant service before enlisting as a private in the U.S. Army on the 27th of July, 1942, in Fort McClellan, near Anniston, Alabama. He deployed to Europe in support of World War II, and it was his actions here that would earn him the Medal of Honor. The citation reads, As leader of the weapons platoon of Company E, 413th Infantry, on the night of November 2, 1944, he fought gallantly in a pitched battle which followed the crossing of the Mark River in the Netherlands. When two machine guns pinned down his company, he tried to eliminate with mortar fire their grazing fire which was inflicting serious casualties and preventing the company's advance from an area rocked by artillery shelling. In the moonlight, it was impossible for him to locate accurately the enemy's camouflage positions, but he continued to direct fire until wounded severely in the legs and rendered unconscious by a German shell. When he recovered consciousness, he instructed his unit and then crawled to the forward rifle platoon positions. Taking a two-man bazooka team on his voluntary mission, he advanced chest-deep in chilling water along a canal toward one enemy machine gun. While the bazooka team covered him, he approached alone to within 15 yards of the hostile emplacement in a house. He charged the remaining distance and killed the two gunners with hand grenades. Returning to his men, he led them through intense fire over open ground to assault the second German machine gun. An enemy sniper who tried to block the way was dispatched and the trio pressed on. When discovered by the machine gun crew and subjected to direct fire, First Lieutenant Bolton, killed one of the three gunners with carbine fire, and his two comrades shot the others. Continuing to disregard his wounds, he led the bazooka team toward an 88mm artillery piece which was having telling effect on the American ranks and approached once more through icy canal water until he could dimly make out the gun silhouette. Under his fire direction, the two soldiers knocked out the enemy weapon with rockets. On the way back to his own lines, he was again wounded. To prevent his men being longer subjected to deadly fire, he refused aid and ordered them back to safety, painfully crawling after them until he reached his lines, where he collapsed. First Lieutenant Bolton's heroic assaults in the face of vicious fire, his inspiring leadership, and continued aggressiveness even through suffering from serious wounds contributed in large measure to overcoming strong enemy resistance and made it possible for his battalion to reach its objective. Cecil received the Medal of Honor 10 months later, on the 1st of September, 1945, and while a few sources said that he served during the Korean War, I was unable to find any records of him doing so. The last record I could find was a promotion list saying that he was a lieutenant colonel on the 14th of May, 1951. Cecil Hamilton Bolton died on the 22nd of January, 1965, at the age of 56. According to his gravestone, he had reached the rank of colonel, and he and his wife Bessie, who died 13 years later, are buried in the Fort Sam Houston National Cemetery in San Antonio, Texas. Section P.C. Grave 22-J. And that was a tale of honor. 
Thank you for listening to Tales of Honor Podcast. Head on over to talesofhonorpodcast.com where you can read these stories, see other ways to support the show, and easily share a story with your friends and family. Tales of Honor Podcast is written and produced by Christoph Ambrosch, and theme song, A New Beginning, is by Ben Sound. If you have any questions or comments, you can send them to talesofhonorpodcast at gmail.com. And until next time, I'm Christoph Ambrosch. Thanks for listening. Thanks for listening.